what we got. I got a um, short time frame to get this thing put back together. I'm gonna try and do it hopefully later today. All right, got everything laid out. Get this car around. This first video is uh, going to be for um, installing the pistons, like reinstalling them if you take them out. Got the uh, like the head surface and the block surface clean and smooth. Um, probably touch up the uh, bolt holes. There's 12 of them, so I'll probably just touch them up, and just like spin a paper towel on them, and and then just pre-thread a bolt, uh, head bolt in to each one of them, coated in uh, anti-seize lubricant. Yeah, the previous video you guys seen the the uh, if you follow the channel, the uh, piston ring removal and install. So pretty much all you're gonna need putting them back in as the smallest um, ring compressor they got, which this is the smallest one. I can't remember the specs on it, but it comes with this. Tighten it and loosen it. Let's get into it. To start, I'm just gonna make sure each of uh, the cylinders are there's no debris in them or anything. Take a little bit of this stuff or uh, shoot, I just had the other stuff I got. I can't find it. It was just sitting here. Anyways, you're gonna take a little bit of this stuff. This is what I'm gonna use. You can use a little bit of grease. Uh, a little bit of grease, um, uh, break-in oil, regular oil, as long as it's going to slick off the surface, it should be okay. Glad I got my prostate exam gloves on. Each, each one of the pistons that you're going to be putting in. I'm just going to, oh, that's way too much. I'm just going to put a little tiny bit on around uh, the top where the rings are and just. Get it all on the surface of the piston, like the sides of the piston. skirt and you're also going to make sure you get some on the battery. We make sure it's completely lubricated. And then also on the sides the rod here where it's flat. Make sure there's a little bit on there. underneath and just make sure 
the uh, where the uh, this part of the rod like bolts around the crankshaft. Just run like a, uh, like a microfiber cloth or a rag, just run around it, make sure it's smooth. And good. Uh, we'll go down there now. All right. I'm gonna go down here. And just make sure down here is clean. something else from the front of the car and you're gonna just find the arrow on the top of each piston there's an arrow pointing in the direction of the front like referencing the piston to the front of the engine and the arrow should be pointing towards the front of the engine when the piston goes in. So in this case, it's pointing that way. So the front of the engine is the passenger side. If, and for anyone who doesn't know, so this one, this one is gonna go in likewise. Once you get them laid out exactly how they go in, you're going to take each one. This is laying them out like this is just for reference purposes. You're going to take each one. You hold it like you will and you're going to drop it in. You're just, these are just in here finger tight, the uh, rod bolts. Just take the rod bolts out. Lay them exactly how they came out in relation to the rod and the piston. Likewise. So you know, so you're not mixing and matching this thing here. And then get ready. I'm gonna do one at a time in this video, so I'll go up. I'll use a spring compressor, push a uh, wall, well, I'll, I'll gap the rings and make sure like the gaps are staggered and then I'll use a spring compressor, push this one in and get the, the uh, bottom, the, the end cap bolted up to the bottom of the rod and then I'll go on from there. Also, you're going to make sure every single bolt that you put back has anti-seize. Then you coat every single thread, you undo, and you, like you unscrew, and then you screw back in with the anti-seize. It's just a good practice that way. Nothing will, nothing will uh, snap due to dry threads or anything like that. Come back up top here. I'm gonna make sure you got your spring compressor and it's wide, like all the way wide open. Make sure there's nothing in there. Make sure you wipe it out real good, clean it out, do whatever you need to do. Get your Allen key to came with it to crank it down. Alright, you're just gonna make sure, just make sure your gaps are good. I haven't set these ones yet, so. And uh, they say that you shouldn't have either of the two top ring gaps over top of these two oil ports right here, the two cutouts right there, or these two oil ports, just for blow-by reasons, I guess, and oil. We'll leak past them. 
So make sure we got this top one. So I put it like there. Second one will rotate around to there. the oil ring I do say right, there's the one gap there so we gotta rotate this so it's not on at either a this gap or the other rings gap and then make sure each of these three the upper and lower retaining ring for the oil ring and the oil ring and make sure none of them overlap in this case they're staggered so the upper and lower rings are good and then on all these when they send out uh, these ring packs the two ends of the oil ring will be color coded. They'll have a little color on them, so they're easy to identify. So we gotta try and get that staggered. Gotta try and hold the oil ring in place and just rotate the top retaining ring. And there we go, it rotated. Not. Oh, see, I moved the second ring, so now got to adjust the second one. All right, that should be sufficient enough. All right, so the second cap is there. The top cap is there. And the bottom one, neither of those three layers are intersecting either the top gaps top retaining ring is there the color coded where the the oil ring comes together is here and then the other gap is down here space a little further bang 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 I don't know if you guys can see that All right, so this one's good to go in and you check your arrow in the front should be pointing towards the front of the engine. That one is pointing that way, so. Take your ring compressor. This is a pain in the ass to do, so. It's not hard, it's just, it can be extremely annoying. You're gonna kinda like, pinch it on this side against the wall of the piston so it so it goes flush and you're going to take your allen key close you'll have to make sure it's wrapping evenly around the piston. Which it seems to be.
once it's on and it's pretty snug, semi snug. Just check the direction again. That's the way it goes in, so lower it down. Once, once you get the side skirts of the piston down in, and you got it pretty, pretty uh, closely lined up, the arrow should run, should be parallel with the block. So once it's pretty closely lined up, and you got to get it, make sure you push. If this is sticking up, it has to be completely flush. The base of this has to be flush against the block surface. That's how I broke uh, one of the pistons on my cruise. It, I didn't have it flush and I took the butt of a wooden hammer, like the wooden butt on a hammer, and I tap, 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 and I didn't see it wasn't flush here. And one of the retaining rings to the oil ring slipped out of there and I kept tapping, 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 and it, and it just snapped it right off. Something, something porous or like hard but soft. They can't like damage the top of the piston. I'll be right back. feel it when the rings like pass through and the piston is completely inside of the cylinder it'll it'll feel like a little click 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 and then that's each of the rings passing through some people have different preferences some people not what I'm using I mean on on the method to hitting the piston in. Some people have uh, say that it's easier or that they like just doing one, giving it one hard, like, like a smack with, with the bottom of a hammer so it just slides all the way in all at once and other people like to tap, 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 tap. I mean, same difference to me. As long as it gets, gets the piston in and the piston's in right, then that's good. One down, three to go.
18 foot pounds and an additional 45 degrees. Alrighty then. There you guys have it. Back for you. Uh, go and bolt, bolt the, uh, the rod main cap bolts on. Like I said earlier, just make sure every bolt that you take out you use anti-seize or some kind of thread lubricant trust me it's only going to benefit you in the end Mm. That's 216 inch pounds, which is 18 foot pounds, and then an additional 45 degrees.